Welcome to Delane Gibson's Workforce Risk Management Webinar Series. I'm Dan Head, and along with Margaret Short, we'll be explaining how effective workforce risk management can mitigate risks, improve processes, reduce costs, and impact the bottom line long-term for organizations. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoy the webinar. For years, we've all been trained to expect our brokers to become involved a few months prior to our employee benefit renewals. They gather plan design and demographic information and reach out to the marketplace for competitive quotes. You then likely sit with them, analyze a spreadsheet of options, weigh potential premium savings with out-of-pocket increases to your employees, and dwell on how a change will be received by your employees. You make a decision, your broker helps communicate changes and facilitates enrollment with the insurer and then provides reactive service for nine to ten months of the year. All necessary aspects of the job and they're there if you need them yet you rarely hear from them until the, re the renewal. So essentially are their liaison services, market access, and spreadsheets worth the five to ten percent you pay them? To elaborate a bit further, we're all accustomed to receiving assistance with the design, funding, and administration of employee benefit plans, stock services, if you will. But with the advent of the Affordable Care Act and HR technology, brokers now tout their compliance guidance and the technology platforms they build and offer clients. Naturally, within a saturated market and the red ocean that brokers exist within, fear of losing accounts is paramount. A good thing for consumers, however, very little customization is actually provided. Instead, brokers thrust a menu of services in front of clients to calm their fear of not providing comprehensive services. The conversation has changed. Brokers need to operate as business consultants and manage risks within HR and the workforce. As business consultants and risk managers, a broker should help their clients realize what their competitors are offering and how their total compensation compares. So yes, benchmarking is important, but from there, what else is your broker providing? The broker should understand your long-term business goals, the financial health of your company, and the overall health of your employees. And with this information, when appropriate, they should help you explore options outside of the traditional insurance market. Captive funding solutions, self-funding, and even hybrid conservative self-funding options should all be explored as a means to assuming and transferring risks. And by embracing risk management within your workforce and HR, you can better control your largest expenses and greatest assets, benefits, and your employees. So exactly what is risk management and how exactly do you apply it to your clients? At Delane Gibson, we work with clients to identify, organize, and mitigate strategic business hazard and workforce risks to their organizations. For those risks we identify as high impact and high likelihood, we will work with the client to determine the best way to address the risk's impact. Our solutions will strive to prevent, mitigate, transfer, finance, and assume the risk. And our ultimate goals are to improve processes, reduce our client's total cost of risk, and to positively impact our client's bottom line. Total cost of risk, finance, assume, transfer, prevent. What do these terms really mean? Many employees and companies have a claim, say a disability or a worker's compensation claim. The employee gets injured, you file the claim, they leave work and return at some point. But what is the true impact of the claim? Who takes on the absent employee's job responsibilities? How is the insurance impacted the following year? How much time is spent ensuring the employee's claim is handled correctly and they receive payment on time? What happens when they return? Do they return at the same position? And if not, what are your expenses now that you've hired an additional employee? These are all factors that arise when a risk occurs and they all directly impact the company's bottom line. So total cost of risk encompasses premium, the compensation you pay your broker, time spent handling a risk, and indirect and direct costs of the risk's impact. Other risks within the workforce and HR that many companies address include turnover, performance, culture and engagement, and employment practices. To prevent the impact of these risks might include surveying employees, measuring engagement metrics, and then implementing team meetings or outings, total compensation statements, or even quarterly summits to start to impact culture and engagement. If you're worried about culture as you change healthcare plans and take on a higher deductible, assuming a portion of the deductible could be an effective way to capture cost savings while also salvaging and even improving culture.
So by following an ongoing process and executing a risk discovery meeting where we ask questions to gain insight, we're able to realize where risks exist, which ones are high impact and high likelihood, and how exactly we're going to address the risks moving forward. Our team and customized workforce risk management plans are intended to remain involved ongoing in an effort to positively assist and impact our clients long term. As we head into summer, please join us for the following webinars in which we'll explore prevalent risks and how workforce risk management can address their impact and protect your business. Thank you for your time and attention. We hope you enjoyed the webinar, and we look forward to sharing our future webinars with you shortly. Thank you.